Hi there, this is GCSE Physics, Atomic Structure Lesson 1. The title is Nuclear Notation. So the objectives are to identify different notations such as mass number, atomic number, etc. It'll all become clear once we've gone through them. Uh, and then we're going to make some calculations regarding nuclear notation. So let's make a start. Remember, you're going to need to pause at different points of this video to make the notes. And uh, hopefully it goes pretty straightforward. So an atom consists of a small central nucleus composed of protons and neutrons and surrounded by electrons. So this is a lithium atom. So the, the color coded. So we've got three protons, we've got three electrons and four neutrons. And an atom will always have the same number of electrons as protons. And that's to do with the charge. So we'll talk about the charge of each later on, but an atom's charge is neutral. And we'll refer back to this in a moment. Remember to pause if you need to make any notes. So what about atomic and mass number? So the atomic number of an atom is equal to the number of protons in its nucleus. And the mass number of an atom is equal to the, the number of protons and or plus the number of neutrons that are in the nucleus. So atomic number is the number of protons. The mass number is the total number of protons and neutrons. So in the instance of the lithium atom that we looked at, there's three protons, four neutrons, and three electrons. Therefore, the lithium atom will have an atomic number of three, because the atomic number, remember, is just the number of protons. A mass number of seven, because mass number is the total number of protons and neutrons. What about properties of protons, neutrons, and electrons, then? You might already know this, but if not, let's have a look. So proton, position in the atom. Proton's in the nucleus, that's in the centre. Relative mass, so we call the proton 1. Okay. It's not its actual mass. Its actual mass is... I'll write this down, but you don't need to know this for GCC. It's 1 times 10 to the power of minus 27 kilograms. So it's very small, but at GCC we just deal with relative... Atomic mass, so we call a proton plus one, and then the neutron electron will be compared to the proton. Same with the charge, so the relative electric charge for a proton, we just say plus one because it's got positive charge. The charge of a proton is actually plus 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs. Charge is measuring coulombs if you've done electricity, you should know that. But again, at GCC, it's, it's relative charge that we talk about. So what about a neutron? The position in the atom, well, the neutron's in the nucleus with the protons. Relative mass, a neutron is essentially the same size or the same mass as a proton. So we call that one as well. It is in reality a tiny amount different. Uh, relative electric charge, it's got zero charge. Neutron, you can remember that as neutron neutral, if you wish. Electron position in the atom, so that's outside the nucleus of so that orbits. Now, the relative mass of an electron is different. An electron is around 2,000 times smaller. It's actually like 1,837 or 40, whatever it is. But it's around 2,000 times. So that's got a relative atomic mass of 0 0.005, which is just 1 divided by 2,000. Relative electric charge. So electrons are the opposite of a proton. So that's got a charge of minus 1. In reality, of course, its charge will be minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So act, they've actually got the same charge. They're just completely opposite. But relatively, it's a plus one, minus one. Okay, let's move on then. Right, so we've got an isotope of carbon. We'll come on to what isotopes are in a moment. But an isotope of carbon, just an atom, consists of six protons and eight neutrons. And it can be written in a couple of ways. So the first way is like this carbon-14, and the 14 is just the mass number, the total number of protons and neutrons. So if you add the 6 protons and the 8 neutrons, you get 14. So you could call it carbon-14, just like that. Another way of notation, or notating the, the, the isotope, is to write it like this. So you have the, the element symbol, which is the C, and then above it, the, the big number 14, that's the mass number. Okay, so you write 14 there. And the bottom number is the atomic number, which is the number of protons. So there are the two ways of writing it. In your exam, you might, you might have to do calculations involving the bottom one. 
for the K-series. We'll do that in a couple of lessons' time. But they're the two notations. So if you want to write that down. All right, let's move on. Right, so what's an isotope? So the atoms of an element always have the same number of protons. In a bit, I'm going to show you a periodic table and, and show you a little pattern that you might not be aware of. But atoms always have the same number of protons. Isotopes are atoms of the same element, but they've got different numbers of neutrons. So an example is uh, hydrogen. So hydrogen is obviously the simplest element. It's just a proton and an electron. So we've got th these three isotopes of hydrogen. So the first one's hydrogen, as you can see, one proton, one electron. And you've got hydrogen two, deuterium. So we've got a proton and an electron. But we've got a neutron now. It's still hydrogen because it's got one proton. If it's got one proton, it's hydrogen. So if it's got an extra neutron, it's still hydrogen. It's just heavier. It's or it's, it's just an isotope. So an isotope basically means it's got a, a, an extra neutron, or it could have less neutrons. It depends. So and the other one, tritium. So it's still hydrogen because it's got one proton and it's got one electron. But now it's got two neutrons. So all of these are hydrogen, they're just isotopes of hydrogen. And hydrogen specifically has these special names. Okay, let's move on. Right, if you want to have a go at this one then. So if you can pause and have a go at these four questions. That'll take you through the answers. So determine the number of protons and neutrons in the isotopes notated below. So first one, nitrogen. So we've got seven protons. That's the atomic number at the bottom. And then the number of neutrons would be the difference between the total mass and the atomic number. So you just do 13, take away seven to get the number of neutrons. Cobalt would have 27 protons given by the atomic number at the bottom. And then the number of neutrons would be the total mass minus the number of protons. So 60 minus 27, which gives us 33. They use gold. So 79 protons, that's the atomic number. Neutron number should be okay by now is the total mass 197, subtract the 79, so that gives 118 neutrons. PU, plutonium, 94 protons, just the atomic number. Total number of neutrons would be the difference, 239, subtract 94, 145 neutrons. So just out of interest, a little bonus, if they if these were if these were all atoms, how many electrons would they have? So the first one would be seven electrons. So cobalt, the second one, would be 27 electrons. The gold would be 79 electrons. And the plutonium would be 94 electrons. Remember, atoms are neutral in terms of their charge, so they have the same number of protons as they do electrons. And apart from the smallest atoms, most nuclei have more neutrons than protons. So as they get heavier, the, the neutron number will exceed the amount of protons. Right, so this is what I want to show you. So a periodic table of the elements. So you'll get one of these in your exam. And all I want to show you is proton number. So the first one, so we've got hydrogen at the top. So there's one proton. And as you go from left to right, you'll see helium, two protons. Lithium's got three. Beryllium's got four. Boron, five. Carbon, six. Nitrogen, seven. Oxygen's got eight. Fluorine's got nine. Neon's got ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, calcium's got 20. What you can see is that each time we move across the proton or the atomic number, which is the number of protons, increases by one. So if you change the proton number, you would get a, a different element. Also, so if something has seven protons, it is nitrogen. And that's it. Can't be anything else. If it's got eight protons, it's oxygen. If it's got nine protons, it's fluorine. If it's got 83 protons, it's bismuth. And so on. You can, however, have these with a different number of neutrons. They would just be called isotopes. So it's the same element, different number of neutrons. Right, let's do some questions. Just pause and have a go at these. 
and then I'll take through some answers. So let's look at these now. So explain what these words mean. So nuclear number. Actually, I've not even told you what nuclear number is, so hopefully you Googled that or you've probably just let it play through. Sorry about that. Nuclear number is just another name for mass number. It's the total number of protons and neutrons. There you go, bonus question. Let's move on. Atomic number. I actually did tell you what this one was. Atomic number is the total number of protons. Mass number, that's the total number of protons and neutrons. So basically mass number and nuclear number are the same thing. It's just an interchangeable term. The one that you should commonly hear more is mass number. But if you hear nuclear number, now you know. An isotope, an isotope's an atom. So an atom can have different number of neutrons. Uh, the element stays the same, it's just got more mass. It could have less mass, it depends. But it's the same element. Different number of neutrons. So what happens to an atom if you change the proton number? So we looked at the periodic table, and if you change proton number, you would get a different element. The proton number depicts the element that you've got. The third one, what can you say about the charge of an atom? We've explained in your answer. So atoms have neutral charge, and they have the same number of protons and electrons. So hopefully that introduction to atomic structure went okay. I hope you found it useful. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll, I'll speak to you soon.